pirate is uh, there because there's some pretty hefty monsters that we have and somewhere along the line brains will only take you so far and you're gonna need some brawn to go with it and so this guy's pretty this guy's pretty big as a matter of fact you know one of the things we were fighting was you know how do we not get him so big he becomes sort of cartoonish you know and it's a fine line there but that you know he's big enough that he could take on 12 guys and you see him lifting again heavy instruments and tanks somebody has to be the muscle of a group so you're sort of going how do you put a well-oiled machine together the female in there you know sort of boring a little bit from uh laura croft a bit that you know sexy sexy babes sort of sell it's the reason why we've got the voodoo queen she's pretty uh and, and given that a lot of the people who buy video games are you know young males you know showing pretty ladies is never sort of a a, a a bad thing so we've got her we wanted her to be a marksman <laughs> that she would be very skilled you know again that because again the one thing i always hated if i've got a pet peeve about horror movies on any level it's the damsel in distress you know and so I uh, just just kill her just kill her and get her done with matter of fact good riddance because she's just like soft and like get done with her where I'm I'm more impressed with the the characters like um, the Sigourney Weaver character Ripley in uh, Aliens you know at the beginning you know you didn't really get a sense that she was sort of as tough as she was by the end of the movie but she sort of rose to the occasion and she got to the point where it's like it's either me or it's gonna they're gonna take over the ship and she had to then you know take them all on and so strong sort of female characters that you know who cares whether they're curvy or not you know i i get those women i i i, I sort of i sort of like those women that are very strong and i'm married and i've got one of those wives that would actually go through walls to sort of protect her family uh so for her we wanted to have again sort of a sleek sort of nimble sort of quick looking one where the scientist was more of a thinker and the and the pirate guy is a sort of more of a brawler so uh for, for dracula i want him to be like a big bat you know and again if you take a look uh at the toy and the way that he moves in the video game you'll see that you know i didn't i didn't want him to be sort of standing tall and regal i wanted him to be a little bit hunched over why because anything that's sort of half man and half creature to me should have sort of a sort of a slump sort of posing on him um, but i also wanted to have the cape come into play from time to time because there's an air of mystery not only with a guy who's got a cloak but again remember he's sort of based on a big giant bat and and if you see a bat hanging upside down they're really cool and how they actually sort of wrap their arms around each other like this and all you sort of see is a peak of their head which is why again the cloak on him is is very interesting um a lot of versions of uh, dracula have him as sort of a gentleman uh, i was less interested in that because again it's not nearly as interesting in terms of the visual uh, as you'll see we have a lot of manacles on him we've got uh, chains and we've actually got some hooks that are ch uh, into him he almost looks like a, a bit of a slave it might have been like a you know like a freak vampire that escaped now and he's sort of angry at society because they try to make him some kind of freak show uh, and so that was sort of what we wanted to make was sort of a, a giant living batman if you will or man bat so i don't get sued uh, for frankenstein frankenstein's actually sort of the uh, the most interesting of the bunch because he's that reanimated zombie you know back from the dead all those versions of you know the the ghost if you will you know given that the story is you know cobbling pieces from dead people and putting them together and and making them come alive so uh he he's sort of fun because he has all the uh the uh stitching and the cross hatching looks like a you know again a macabre you know quilt patched together uh but the thing that's sort of interesting with him is we also if you take a look we've got like the the, the dead skeleton on his back uh in the toy and you see it uh from time to time in the video game I just thought it would be sort of an odd commentary that the guy back from the dead walks around with dead things on his back. So it's almost it's almost like a bizarre uh, security blanket for him to, you know, he understands that he's reanimated, he understands that he's dead, 
And because of that, he still wants to hang around dead things because he feels sort of more comfortable within that realm of, of doing it. And he's also the biggest guy. Again, I think most of us sort of tend to think of Frankenstein as sort of big and, and, and brutish, if you will. The scientists came from the thought process of, uh, which wasn't necessarily a big stretch of, uh, you know, there's always sort of a mad scientist in these sort of black and white movies I grew up on. And so, you know, what if one of them wasn't necessarily a mad scientist, but actually somebody who knew that the experiments had gone wrong, but now had to use his intelligence to help thwart, uh, you know, the, the existence of these characters. You know, Dr. Frankenstein knew exactly what he was creating and actually, to some extent, actually went mad and, and went along with the ride. So I, I see our mad scientist, if you will, actually not mad, but actually the guy that goes, oh my God, I should have never made that experiment. I need to now correct it. Pirate is uh, there because there's some pretty hefty monsters that we have, and somewhere along the line, brains will only take you so far, and you're going to need some brawn to go with it. And so, this guy's pretty. This guy's pretty big. As a matter of fact, you know, one of the things we were fighting was, you know, how do we not get him so big he becomes sort of cartoonish, you know? And it's a fine line there. But that, you know, he's big enough that he could take on 12 guys and you see him lifting, again, heavy instruments and tanks. Somebody has to be the muscle of a group. So you're sort of going, how do you put a well-oiled machine together? The Mummy is just, again, another fun one uh, to play with uh, corpses and uh, zombies. Uh, again, you know, sort of a... A thing that works for Frankenstein and 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 uh, with the mummy, but the mummy movie when I was a kid for for um, uh, the Universal. Here, here here's what I thought. I thought the mummy was the creepiest looking out of the bunch. It was it was true because if you guys remember, he sort of had his hands sort of like this. It wasn't a very functional hand, and it was it was almost like he was petrified a little bit, and he had his arm wrapped up. And he, and he sat like this, and then his face was all wrinkled before they put the band-aids around. And so he was the creepiest looking guy. The problem was, he was also the slowest guy. You know, he just... And so I, I was never overly afraid of him, unless you were in a claustrophobic place, because the mummies aren't very agile, at least the ones that I grew up with. So the, the ones you're going to see that we do, they're very skinny. Why? Because they're sort of dead cadavers. So it's like, you know, we actually sort of... That happens to us. But I also wanted them to be skinny for a reason. I wanted them to be very agile. I mean, you're going to see in the video game, there's actually different sizes and shapes, and each one of them moves in a different way. But the, the true guys that come in, and, you know, there's 50 of them, you know, they have to be sort of lean and mean. So when they're actually taking on the heroes, I want them to be able to deflect it, not go, I will kill you, and their head's off before they even get their hand up. And it's like, they're down. So uh, we wanted to play on that.
the sea creature is just an amalgamation of a lot of things that we've seen in movies and books and comic books and and fairy tales that have been told to us uh, at the campfires uh, of you know even Loch Ness monster if you will uh, and so we wanted to to bring you know something that could come out of the 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 water because if you ever been by the ocean or a lake at night that water comes out very black uh, and very dark and 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 you know a log pops up and it scares you and you go what was that you know you think that something's coming out of the water and you go oh, it's just a log you know we just went by a log uh, and so people get really really sort of frightened at night alone uh, near water if it's not a bright moon day and you're not walking around with your girlfriend and so we just wanted to have this creature that wasn't overly simplistic but actually you know again when it came rambling up on the ground would be that version that you think of you know if if a man started evolving into uh, sort of a, a fish uh, we did we did all this at, at uh, social studies and biology you know sort of showing the evolution of man from like a monkey into a man you know well we, we, they also taught us in some respects that the fish came out of the water and started to walk too so this is that one that's sort of halfway between fish and man and 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 now got mutated so they can live in the world with Dracula and, and Frankenstein. The last one is sort of the counterpunch to the voodoo queen that we needed to have somebody who could actually sort of go up uh, and fight sort of supernatural powers, uh, you know, on an equal term. The other three were essentially humans that didn't possess any sort of magic, if you will. Uh, we needed to add that element, given that there was going to be a lot of it, given that you got reanimated uh, 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 mummies and, and, and Frankensteins and zombies and and uh, voodoo, uh, uh, you know, spells being there. We needed somebody to be able to sort of throw up some walls against that. And so that's sort of where the high priest sort of came in to the equation on this one. The voodoo, she was, she, she was just a take that, you know, we wanted to get a female character in there, obviously. And, and for the most part, you know, it's tough to actually make beautiful women that scary because you know, most of us don't care. We actually find it sort of arousing, you know, in an S and M kind of way. You know, it's like, oh, cool. Uh, but uh, for her, we, I thought that the theme of uh, voodooism is sort of, if you've seen certain movies, very creepy. Uh, when when you have sort of even like older ladies, you know, and and you see stuff that you know still talk about it, that they they have their little rattles that shake and they stare at you, and they and they talk very deliberate and. And they, they hex you and they go, I, I, I place a curse on you. Uh, but even though there's a part of you that goes, yeah, 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 whatever. Just just a silly, silly little story that from your past. You, they say it with such conviction. Actually, it's kind of creepy and spooky. Uh, and so we, we wanted her to be sort of the, the queen of the undead, if you will, uh, in, in a manner that although she's very alluring in her looks, uh, she would also be you know creepy enough with all the bones that are on her and the mask that she can put on and some of the 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 apparatus and even even those big shoes that she's wearing and just to give herself a sense of a bigger presence she was the werewolf character is the one where I, I we actually had the most fun with because you know, for most people it's it's a it's a man and all of a sudden he starts to look up at the moon and then he starts to twitch and then he gets very hairy. Uh, not really scary when a man gets hairy, you know, especially if you've been to the beach and you see some of these, you know, guys that got it on the front. And it's actually uh, it's revolting. I wouldn't say horrific. It's actually a little revolting. So what we want to do is take the theme of a werewolf, which is sort of turning from one creature to the other. In this case, we wanted to do it so it's almost like the creature's coming from the inside out. And so instead of having the man just get hairier and turn into the monster, like on, on the movies where they actually, it's pretty fun, they used to walk by post. So they do a cut and then all of a sudden add more hair. And then five posts later, he, he was the werewolf. Uh, this is the one that is, uh, the werewolf actually comes out from inside the man. So if you actually look at the, the toy and the video characters and stuff, um, you're going to actually see that it's almost like the human, for lack of a better explanation, is actually barfing up 
the, the, the curse of the werewolf so that the werewolf literally just goes and peels the skin off and then becomes this sadistic looking, almost demonic looking thing. And then, and then when uh, the sun would come up, it would actually regenerate sort of a human form. And then the next time, poof, it would have to come out again and it would have to regenerate. Poof. And so theoretically, if you were collecting the skins, after 20 transformations, you'd have sort of 20 skins uh, sitting on around, much like a snake uh, shedding its skin, and you know, but again, it 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 it'd go from monster to human, and monster to human, uh, and so the, the interesting one with that one is just is just a metamorphosis of what happens to a man turning into a creature.